On today's show, I'll give you five things we learned about the Dallas Mavericks this preseason, including how Spencer Dinwiddie and Christian Wood have a chance to do something really special this year. I'll explain that and more on today's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavericks Podcast. Hey, hey, Dallas Mavericks are NBA champions. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Welcome, you are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to comment anything below. Let us know. Give me one thing you've learned about the Mavericks this preseason. Just one. Comment that below. Add us on Twitter at Lockdown Mavs. You can add me on Twitter at Nick Van Exit. Isaac's not with me today. He is traveling somewhere, doing something in this great wide world. But you can add him on Twitter at Isaac L. Harris. Uh, Let's today talk about what we learned in the preseason. There's a bunch of stuff that we've learned in the preseason, but I'm going to give you five definite things that I learned. Christian Wood and Spencer Dinwiddie, they have a chance to do something really special, I think. It's a little, it's different for both of them. So I'll explain what that is. And then let's talk about some of the roster moves the Mavs made. Isaac talked about it a little bit on the weekend show after the Utah Jazz game, but the Mavs are going to sign Compazzo, or at least that's, or at least uh, that's what that the Mavericks are going to sign Compazzo. And then the Mavericks signed McKinley Wright on a two way deal. Uh, they also signed Grant Riller and then they wave him immediately. What does that mean? I'll explain that in the third segment as well. But let's start with this. I think we learned five things about the Dallas Mavericks in preseason. You you have to take all of it with a grain of salt, though. The fan jam, the live practice scrimmage that we got to see, the you know intra-squad scrimmages that they did that Kidd and others have spoken about. And the Mavericks played three preseason games. And only three. Some teams played six. Some teams played six preseason games. You got a lot. You got a big sample size of a bunch of different things. The Mavs only played three. And they played against maybe... Maybe three of the worst five teams in the NBA this year. The Oklahoma City Thunder, Orlando Magic, and the Utah Jazz. So take all of this. I mean, take all of this with a grain of, with a grain of sand, grain of salt, whatever, whatever grain you want to take, grain of wheat, grain of corn. And But I think we did learn some things. I think there's five things we definitely learned about this Mavericks team, despite the, you know, Luka didn't play in one of those games, despite new players getting added, despite... A bunch of different, playing bad teams in the preseason, despite a bunch of different things. One thing I think we learned, Spencer Dinwiddie has a chance to do something really special this season. According to Nico Harrison, uh, Spencer Dinwiddie's parents told him that he's never been happier in a basketball situation. Uh, Callie Kaplan told that to uh, to Jason Kidd and was asking him about Spencer Dinwiddie's situation, and and Jason Kidd kind of responded in the same way. All we're doing this season is asking Spencer to be Spencer. Just to be him, just to go out there and and be and do his game, and that is something that's really exciting for a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie. That's had a really weird like run in his career. Like like think about Spencer Dinwiddie's career as he went. So he goes to Colorado. He could have gone to one of those bigger schools. He could have actually gone to Harvard too, out of high school. He decides to go to Colorado. He wants to play there. He he has a terrible start. Then he figures it out. Then he goes. Uh, then he goes second round in the draft, the 38th pick to the Pistons in 2014. He kind of doesn't play. And he's just kind of like there with Detroit in 2015, 2016. Then he goes over to Brooklyn. He works his way into that rotation. He becomes like a really good off the bench player, eventually starts for them. And then like in that, in his fourth year with Brooklyn, he finally breaks through. He averages like 20 points and seven assists a game. And then he gets then he gets hurt that next year. They go to the I think they go to the playoffs that year. And he gets hurt. He gets hurt the next year. And so he's just had these weird setbacks. He's worked his, himself into these situations. He goes to Washington then after coming back from that injury and tried to be a leader, tried to tried to stand out, tried to do all the things that you want like a veteran type player to do, and they didn't want any of it. They didn't want any of it. They hated him while he was there. It seemed like the fans hated him. The you know the the players didn't seem to really get along with him. There's just a weird vibes in Washington. He comes over to the Dallas Mavericks. He plays 23 games for the Mavericks. Starts seven of them. Plays next to Luca. He's the third option. Clearly, clearly, like as defined by Jason Kidd, the third option 
after Luca, Jalen Brunson, and then it was Dinwiddie. Like that was very clear to him. He fit into his role well. Then Jalen Brunson now leaves, and he's now thrust into the spot where he's the second option when he's on the court for the most part. He's in a really good situation for him. He can re- he really controls parts of his destiny this year. And there's there's not a ton of players in the NBA that have these type of seasons where, all right, it's in your court. Literally, the ball is in your court. You control your destiny in this. The way that he plays this season could determine a lot for his career and could determine a ton for the Dallas Mavericks. And that's the part that we care about the most, I think, is what it means for the Dallas Mavericks. He has a chance to, if he is like a pseudo all-star, to really raise the ceiling for the Mavericks. They really need that secondary ball handler, especially if it's only going to be Luka and him, to be really good. And if that player is really, really good, makes everybody else around him better, scores when they need him to, steps up when they need him to, then the Mavericks are going to win a ton of games. And if he doesn't, then they're going to have to find that scoring elsewhere, which they can do. They can find that scoring elsewhere. They can find it in Christian Wood. They can find it in Tim Hardaway Jr. They can find it in the three-point shooting of Dorian and Reggie Bullock and Maxi and the rolling of, of JaVale McGee and Dwight Powell maybe. like They, they can find the scoring. They, they can make it work. They've done it in the past. But if he's good and he takes control of his situation, he has a chance to do something really special, to, to, to lift the Mavericks, like to lift the, the ceiling of the Mavericks, to do what Jalen Brunson did last year. His games over the preseason were really interesting. He plays that first game against OKC. He's three of six from the field. Um, He's three assists, two steals in 16 minutes. He looked aggressive. He looked like he was really going out there and taking control. Luka didn't play in that game, so he knew exactly what his role was from from the jump. Against Orlando, he plays 18 minutes. He only takes three shots. He had four assists and a steal and a block, which were nice, but looked like he wasn't really aggressive and assertive out there. Then the Utah game, he goes one of eight from the field. Nine assists, three steals in 25 minutes. So, like, he's going out there trying to do his game. And if he's, like, really inconsistent, really, you know, not efficient in his scoring and all that, it it could affect the Mavericks a lot because they're going to keep asking. They're going to keep pointing at him. They're going to keep pointing at him and asking him to lead the team in certain spots. Obviously not when Luka's out there, but in certain spots. And that's how he can lift the Mavericks. The other player I think that really has um, – well, let's do this one. The other thing that I think we learned about this Dallas Mavericks team is their bench is going to be really, really good. Their bench is going to be a problem. Like, do the whole a uh, problem. Like, do the whole thing where it's multiple vowels in the middle of a problem. Spencer Dinwiddie is going to be running the second unit. Jason Kidd said he really liked that. He actually brought Dinwiddie off the bench in one of the preseason games because he wanted to see how it works. He's going to start. Dinwiddie's going to start the season, but he's going to be playing with that second unit a lot. It's going to be... Dinwiddie and Christian Wood and Tim Hardaway Jr. and Maxi and probably Josh Green. And they're just going to run that unit a lot where you have you have some pretty good shooting. You have rolling. You have you know some not great defense, but you have at least Maxi and Green and the size of the other three guys to play out there. And Dinwiddie's going to be running that second unit, and he's got a chance to really boost that bench. Uh, and Tim Hardaway Jr. and Christian Wood are going to score a ton of points off of Dinwiddie's stuff. And that's another thing that I think we learned about this team is their bench is really going to be a problem. Tim Hardaway Jr. had those 20 points against Utah. He only scored eight versus Orlando, didn't play versus OKC, but bringing him back is a real plus. And especially if he's just going to play his role of come off the bench, light it up, get your own shot every once in a while, hit some, hit a bunch of threes, and if you get hot, it's over. Like when, when Tim Hardaway Jr. gets hot, it's kind of over for other teams because all of a sudden that's the Mavericks' fourth option. Third or fourth option depending on who's who's on the court or who's playing in that game at any given point. It's like Luka, Dinwiddie, Christian Wood, and then it's probably Tim Hardaway Jr. And so he's he's down the pecking order, but he can get really hot. And he did in that he did in that um Utah game, he scored 20 points, and it's one of the reasons why the Mavericks were um were in that game and ended up ended up winning that game by a lot. Coming up, Christian Wood. This in, in a similar sense to Spencer Dinwiddie has a chance to do something special for the Mavericks. But it has to go a certain way. I'll tell you what that is coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Rocket Money. You probably have a bunch of subscriptions. I know I do. I I started looking through all the different streaming services I have, and I'm like, why am I still paying for Paramount Plus? Like, why why am I doing this? We started going through our credit card statement, and I started realizing all the different subscriptions and things that I have. Uh, We had a subscription to Shutterstock. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is, but... 
I had all these different things and you're wasting money on those subscriptions and you just forget about them. It's easy to just, you know, put your card information in there. 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Maybe it's for, you know, an unused Amazon Prime or a Hulu account or something like that. But there's a great app that we can use that helps us track all of our expenses. And because of it, you no longer have to waste money like I am. You don't, uh, that you don't, for subscriptions you don't use and all that. It's formerly known as Truebill, but now it's called Rocket Money. So go check out Rocket Money. Cancel unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash locked on. It could save you hundreds of dollars per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money right now. Again, go to rocketmoney.com slash locked on. All right, Isaac. Let's keep talking about things that we're learning about the Dallas Mavericks. We talked about Spencer Dinwiddie, how he has a chance to do something special if he can be consistent, if he can step up in the situations the Mavs need him to, and how the bench is going to be a big problem because of Spencer Dinwiddie, because of Tim Mardo Jr., but also because of Christian Wood. Christian Wood has a real chance with the Mavericks to impact winning, to carve out a really great role for himself, but it's got to go Jason Kidd's way. This has kind of been my... My thing. This has been my thing since they made the trade for Christian Wood, and nothing in the preseason convinced me that it's anything but this. Christian Wood is coming off the bench because the Mavericks see it as a better fit. They see the defensive liability that Christian Wood can be. They see the fit of him going up against second units being a much better situation for Christian Wood. He can take advantage of those those players off the bench. He's not asked to guard, you know, really great players like there would be in starting lineups. And he'll get way more opportunities. You see in the starting lineup, like even a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie, who's definitely the second option, like very clearly the second option, doesn't get a ton of opportunities when he's in the starting lineup. Because it's Luka and it's kick out to shooters. It's roll, it's roll men with JaVale McGee, the center. He can't shoot as very well, so they're going to just keep rolling him. They're not going to do a ton of like kick out and space the floor with JaVale McGee and run rolls with Christian Wood. Like it just doesn't work that way. And so... They're bringing Christian Wood off the bench and Jason Kidd needs a couple of those carrots to put in front of him to motivate him to get better on defense. And if he can get better on defense, there's a real chance for him. There's a real chance for him to carve out a great role to impact winning for the Mavericks. Uh, You see sometimes when he is on the court with Luka, like in the preseason, here's, here's a bonus thing I learned in the preseason. When Luka was, when Christian Wood was playing with Luka on the court, his defense was almost night and day. It was almost completely different when you when you saw like the times with Christian Wood with Luca on the court or the times with Christian Wood with no Luca on the court. It's almost like he sat up in his chair. It's like a drill sergeant when um oh they they I did this thing where they they teach you like the things that they talk about in the Marines and one of the things is if you're in like a plank position or if you're like you're you know you're in push up position you go into a plank or you go into a squat. Let's, a squat is actually better. When you go into a squat, and they're like, all right, dip into a squat. So you dip into a squat, and they're like, hold it. And so you hold the squat, almost like you're sitting down on an imaginary chair. And if the drill sergeant walks by, and like as the drill sergeant walks by, you go lower, that means you could have gone lower before, right? That means you could have been there before. You just adjusted because you were subconsciously thinking, all right, the drill sergeant's coming by. I got to be on my best behavior. I got to be doing my best. And so you get lower in your squat. like you, you. It's almost like you sit up when the teacher walks by because you just want to be on your best behavior. That's what it felt like with Christian Wood playing defense when Luca was out on the court, which can be good, which can be good. And so I think it's one of two things. Either he realized that, okay, this is, this is winning time right here, <laughs> right? This is, this is the time where I need to play well. I got to pay attention. Luca's out there. Or it's Luca being a leader and asking guys to step up. Luca really tried to make a connection with Christian Wood during the preseason. It was something I really noticed. He would high five him after plays. He would, you know, go up to him after, a, you know, a, like a post up or something like that. Say good job. He would look at him and point at him if he missed him on a, you know, an open three or something like that. And I think that connection is going to be really, really good for the Mavericks. But his defense has to step up. And if he's in the squat position and he only gets better when, you know, it's 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 crunch time or it's winning time for the Mavericks, I don't know if he gains more minutes. you got to be playing defense the way that Jason Kidd and this coaching staff want the whole time. It's how Maxi gets a ton of minutes. It's how Dorian, Dorian and Reggie Bullock. It's how Reggie Bullock went from a 17-minute per game player last year to leading the NBA in playoff minutes. Went balls to the wall, played defense all the time. 
Christian Wood also, though, is just such an easy scorer. He gives the Mavericks so many easy ways to score. Like Tim Hardaway Jr., I wouldn't say is an easy scorer because he's got to get hot. He's got to hit these shots, and it can be all or nothing for him. For Christian Wood, like he can he can manufacture points in a in, in many different ways. Like his putbacks, the rolling, the three point shot, the you know he can get his own shot a little bit, a little like you know drive action. He can do a bunch of different things. Uh, he had 16 points against OKC, 16 points, 13 boards against OKC, 23 points and two boards against Orlando, 12 points and 10 boards, two assists and two blocks against the Utah Jazz. That was in 25, 19, and 23 minutes, respectively. He has a he has a real chance to be the second leading scorer on the Mavericks because he just scores so easily and efficiently. But it's going to have to he's going to have to play defense and it's going to have to be uh the way that this Mavs coaching staff wants it to be. He also has a chance to be a player that really boosts the Mavericks in third quarters because he got a lot of his work done in the third quarter, which was not against the starters of some of these bad teams. So I'm interested to see what it looks like against good teams. I'm interested to see how Christian Wood plays and looks against really good teams this year. What's his role? What does the coaching staff think his role is? And all that. But I think we learned he has a real chance because he's got skills. He's a really skilled player. It's just got to be Jason Kidd's way. And if he can do it Jason Kidd's way, then it could be a problem for the, for other teams. Another thing I learned is that Luka Doncic is the exact same. <laughs> Luka, Luka Doncic. I have to. Nick, that's a good question. Luka Doncic is the exact same. He is. He, he didn't play against OKC. 16 points, 5 assists in 18 minutes against Orlando. 24 points, 6 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks in 30 minutes against the Jazz. He was just out there playing around. He was trying to get guys involved. He was throwing incredible passes. He was just looking good. Um... His didn't take a ton of free throws, so we didn't get a good sample size there to see if he had improved free throw shooting wise or not. But he's just going to be the same. <laughs> There's just no changing what Luka Doncic is, and that's fine. Another thing I learned is that the defense is going to take time. Really interesting comment during the preseason was Maxi Kleba after a training camp practice said we actually got to install zone defense, which is something we didn't get to do until later on in the season. So they when they introduce their defense, they have to introduce these different concepts and things and a lot of players already knew it JaVale McGee coming in already knew it because of his time with the Lakers with with Jason Kidd but they already got to install zone defense which is good but I think it's going to take a little bit it's still going to take a little bit like they've installed all these concepts but what the Mavs defense really relies on is timing and communication guys are flying around everybody's going to their right rotation everybody's flying over here you're flying over to the corner when you know a you know a swing pass happens because you have to rotate to the right way that's going to take time with new guys that's going to take going to take time for even Tim Hardaway Jr to come back and learn it's going to take time for JaVale and Christian Wood to learn and that's one of the reasons why you know the <laughs> the Christian Wood coming off the bench thing with defenses is, is the way that it is because he has to learn the timing with all that stuff Jason Kidd was asked about rim protection after the the Utah game. He said, "Yeah, you know, it's all about effort and it's knowing the system. We haven't played we hadn't played in a long time. They went a week between the second and third preseason games, so I guess that affects your timing, your rhythm and all that, but um it's going to take effort and knowing the system." So he talked about knowing the system. Um these are the points in the paint the Mavericks allowed in their three preseason games. 48 against OKC, 40 against Orlando. Those are high marks. Those are really high marks. They allowed 64 points in the paint against the Jazz on Friday. I'm just going to take a drink of water for a second. 64 points in the paint. That's too many. (laughs) They won the game, but you're playing, you know, you're playing second and third string players a lot of times because it's a preseason game. But 64 points in the paint. Markkinen hit one shot from outside of 12 feet. Everything, he hit six shots at the rim, like literally at the rim. Tip ins layups, all that kind of stuff. I'm questioning about the rim protection. I saw a couple good blocks from JaVale, a really good block from Christian Wood on Colin Sexton on a drive, but how are they going to be against bigs, against guys like Markkinen? Markkinen is not even like a good post scorer. He's not even like a good rebounder at all. And he's in there hitting six shots at the rim during a game. That's going to be interesting. They also got completely out-rebounded in two games. 
against Utah, where they played a lot of their main rotation for most of the game. They got out rebounded fifty two to thirty six. Now, now where's Isaac? <laughs> Good morning, Isaac. They still won the game against Utah. And Isaac's big thing has been you don't always necessarily need to win the rebounding battle to win the game. But we we were told that the rebounds were supposed to be better because of JaVale McGee and Christian Wood. They got out rebounded fifty two to thirty six against Utah, fifty two to thirty five against the Orlando Magic. <laughs> those did not get but those did not get better necessarily. So that's something to watch. Uh, but that's all comes back to the defense takes time. Coming up. Let's talk about Jaden Hardy a little bit because I learned something about Jaden Hardy. And then we'll talk about some of the moves the Mavericks are going to make. Compazzo, McKinley Wright, what, what happened with Grant Rillard, the Mavericks signing him. I'll explain all that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bet Online. It's the best place to check out the odds and lines inside and outside of sports. You can go there right now. Uh, hopefully, you didn't put any money on the Cowboys line over the weekend. But you can check out their uh, NBA lines. They have the NBA futures. You can check out um, conference futures, the Mavericks right now are plus 1,100 to win the West. Warriors number one, Clippers number two, they're pretty close. They're so like plus 300 each, just about. Phoenix is plus 550. Denver is plus 750. Lakers plus 900. They're always inflated. Uh, Grizzlies plus 1,000, and then the Mavericks. So they're they're up there. Like if you take the, the Lakers out, they're one, two, three, four, five. They're sixth in the West, like sixth best odds to win the West according to Bet Online. So you can check that out. You can check out everything else on Bet Online. It's where the game starts. All right, Isaac, let's continue to talk about some things we learned about the Mavericks in the preseason. Last one here Jaden Hardy is just, just out of the rotation. Like, just, just a little out of the rotation. Jason Kidd, right before the game against the Utah Jazz, said, quote, right now, Hardy is just on the outside looking in on the rotation. But that doesn't mean he's not going to get a chance to play. He was talking about um, Utah. Uh, Hardy had a, a real up-and-down training camp. What you'd expect from a young rookie that is, you know, the style of player that Jaden Hardy is, coming in, doing the things on a veteran-ish team like the Dallas Mavericks. He had that... Uh, he had 21 points against OKC. 14 or 16 of them were in the fourth quarter in 24 minutes. He ended, he led the comeback on that one, so that was a good game for him. Then he started against Orlando. He had six points, two assists on two of ten from the field in about 20 minutes. So that was kind of a, a down game, even though he got the start, which was positive. Then against Utah, he only played five minutes because they wanted to play their main rotation. They played him the last five minutes or so. He had two points on one of three shooting, so just had that one transition bucket. But he put together some really good days, even though he's just out of the rotation. And this is what we, you know, Isaac and I have been, been predicting about him since the beginning is he's going to be just out of the rotation, but he's going to have a chance to work his way in. He put together some really good days in training camp. He had the game against OKC where he had 16 points in the fourth quarter and led the comeback for the win. He then started against Orlando. I would consider that a good day, even though he didn't play super well. Um, right after that game against Orlando, Wednesday, October 12th, Jason Kidd, was asked who was the star of your inter-squad scrimmage that we didn't get to see. And he said, Jaden Hardy. That was the first name out of his mouth was Jaden Hardy. So I think that was a positive day for him. He had the live practice where he hit the sham god uh, against Maxi on the one-on-one. That was a really good day for him. Then he had the fan jam where he was going like back and forth with Luca in the inter-squad scrimmage. So he, he built some good days in the preseason. It just wasn't enough and wasn't enough consistently for him to guarantee a spot in the rotation. That's fine. I think that's fine. He It was going to take some time during the season for him to build that. If he did it right away, if if all these things happen and then there was a, like a bunch of other things I could have mentioned from preseason that he did really positively and all of a sudden Jason Kidd's like, he's in the rotation. Like, he's our third guard. We're, he, he's already. Then we would be really impressed. And that would be a really cool thing for the Mavericks. But it's going to take some time, which is what we expected. So nothing's really changed in that. And we've seen that he's got some, he's got some real great ability. And they're going to work on it. So that that's exciting, I think. It's something to look forward to throughout the season. Um, but just know that he is just just right outside of the rotation. So he's not going to be in the regular rotation. Don't, don't expect him to get a ton of minutes early on until he starts earning it. He might play a couple games with the Legends. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so the Mavericks signed, or according to Mark Stein, <laughs> are like on the one-yard line with uh, Faku Campazzo. The former Denver guard uh, played with Luca before overseas. 
Uh, but according to Mark Stein, Compazzo has arrived in Dallas. So he's like literally in the city. League sources say now he only has to complete his physical before signing a one-year deal with the Mavericks on Tuesday. The Argentine point guard would fill the Mavericks 15th roster spot. So what you need to know about Compazzo is that he's the third string point guard. If you start filling out the roster, you have the starting lineup of Luca, Dinwiddie, Bullock, Dorian, JaVale. That's the starting five. Then you have like the next five of Christian Wood, Tim Hardaway Jr., Maxi. Probably Josh Green, Frank Nilakina, and that's like the next five. And then you have the bench five, like the deep bench guys. Your Dwight Powell, Davis Bertans, Theo Pinson, Jaden Hardy, and then Compazzo. Like that's where he's gonna fill in. He's gonna play, you know, the kind of minutes that Hardy or Pinson or you know, he's gonna play like that kind of a role. He's not asked to come in here and play 20, 30 minutes a night. So when we talk about his game, know that it's in that context. They're not gonna ask a whole bunch of him. But they'll ask him to come in in spots. He's going to be a fine playmaker. He's going to be a fine shooter in those spots. He'll probably make those bench units work a little bit better. Like, you know, if guys like Nilakina are not having a great night or maybe Spencer Dinwiddie is out, he comes in. He'll play point guard. He'll set up a bunch of those guys. He'll set up Tim Hardaway well. He'll set up Christian Wood well. He'll kick out to Maxi Kleba for threes. He'll, he'll do a good job in spurts. But you can't ask him to do a ton. He's not going to rise up the ranks, I don't think. He's going to be pesky at defense at times where he gets a bunch of steals and we're like, oh my God, is he a good defender? And then he's going to have other games where he just looks terrible on defense because he's 5'10". Like he can't really hold his own against big guards. Luca just destroys him, but now he's on his team. So, but that's what Composite is coming in to be. He's just, he's just a stopgap. He's adding to the depth chart. Um, just in case Dinwiddie or Luca are out for a game, he can come in and just fill some playmaking minutes. Now McKinley, Wright. He got signed officially to the two-way, so him and Tyler Dorsey are on the two-way contract. They'll be going back and forth from Frisco. I don't see a ton of space for them in this rotation. If we're talking about Jaden Hardy is out of the rotation, I don't see a ton of time for McKinley Wright. But um, what McKinley Wright brings to the team is he's going to bring defense. He was picking up guys full court in preseason, which was positive to see. Uh, Patrick Beverly was his vet in Minnesota when uh, McKinley Wright was on the two-way for them last year. For Minnesota and uh, Patrick Beverly was the guy that like took him under his wing and like tried to teach him about the NBA and stuff. So uh, he kind of sees himself in, in McKinley, Wright. He, he can be a good playmaker too. He had 15 assists and zero turnovers and 41 minutes in the preseason. He had 10 assists in that game against OKC that he played pretty well in. So that was positive. He's going to add a little something, but his shooting is something to be, is a, is a question. I think he took like three threes in the preseason and didn't hit any of them. Like three threes in 41 minutes is, is like not what the Mavs want in guards. <laughs> pretty, pretty much at all. So that's going to be interesting for him to try and figure out a role with the Mavericks, but he'll play with the legends. They'll, they'll, he'll work his way maybe back into the NBA in a different way. And then the last one, Grant Riller. The Mavericks sign this guy, Grant Riller, and then they wave him. So wh- what was up with that? Well, the NBA, NBA teams, they all did this over the weekend. They sign guys real quick. They wave them so they can keep their rights. And then he'll go play with the legends. So he's a guy that played four years at uh, College of Charleston. He was in the 2020 draft. He went in the second round to the Hornets. He played about seven games with the Hornets his rookie year. Then last year, he was on a two-way with the Sixers. He didn't play any games for the the like the main team. He had so- shoulder surgery in December of 2021. But he's a versatile scorer. Like He can hit contested shots and tough shots from deep. He's got a really great handle. Um... He just didn't, we just didn't, haven't really seen him play against good competition in college and then haven't seen him a ton in the NBA. Um, but he's a great ball handler, can hit tough shots. He's 6'3 with a 6'5 wingspan. So he's kind of a, you know, a decent, like an average size guard. And uh, yeah, I, they're going to play him with the legends. So it's him, Tyler Dorsey, McKinley Wright, probably some of the training camp guys will go to the Texas Legends, the Maps G League team too. And they'll try to figure it out there. And so that's why the Mavericks signed and waived Grant Riller. They wanted to see what he's like and play him with the Texas Legends. And we'll see what he's like over there. So that's the whole thing with Grant Riller. And that's the things we learned in the preseason. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We will be back five days this week. Isaac is going to be out, but I'm going to have some good guests for you coming up. I think Katia Vialba is going to join me tomorrow. That should be really fun from Studio 41. Uh, thanks for making us your first listen. For your second listen, get the latest news and rumors in the NBA for just 30 minutes every day with Locked on NBA. Locked on NBA, I host on Thursdays. Jackson Gatlin has you covered today. Go check it out. It's Locked on NBA. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mavs. Peace out. Boom.